Hi, I'm Bob Mangello, and I'm going to show you uh, today the, my latest mini dryer that everybody's been asking about. I've had hundreds of emails and <laughs> thousands of views since I, I did that one video on how to build your own uh, mini conveyor, but what it turned out is the wood, the wood warps, and I, it was just too complicated for me to actually make a kit. So um, today I'm going to show you I'm printing a two-color t-shirt um, and using the conveyor dryer to dry it. So this is for my catering business. I like to print my own t-shirts because it's only a few dollars to do it. And um, uh, so I'm going to go over a few tips on a multi-color print. And I know I haven't made a video in a long time, so I hope this one gives you some new tips and all that on how it all works. And I hope you like the new mini conveyor. Um, you know, there's, uh, I'll have pricing um, on the website uh, by the end of today. It's, it's August, I don't know, August 19th, I think. But, um, I am going away on vacation till September 7th, so if anyone places orders, I'm not going to be able to get uh, to it until I get back, and I'll I'll do them in, in date order. Whoever orders first, that's what I'll work on. The conveyors I don't really have in stock. I'm going to actually have to make each one as, as I get orders. So. Please be patient if you do order, it's not going to happen right away. Flash dryers and blue diamond printers I do have in stock, um, but I, I'll be away on vacation. So even if you order those, the, those I'll ship out the minute I get back. So hope you understand and, and uh, you know it's just been a while but I've been working on my catering business, something I just kind of started three years ago and I've done over 300 parties. It's a total, absolute success. We're opening a restaurant, so really excited about that. But I really want you to know that learning how to print t-shirts on your own, if you have a small business, t-shirts are incredible advertising. And you know, if you're paying 15, 20 bucks a shirt to have them printed, even $5 is too much. It costs a cut, the price of the t-shirt, and 20 cents an ink. Um, so it's really worth getting your own little setup. Mine is very reasonable. I use really, you'll see how easy it is to register and print with in this video. And, uh, and you know, my prices are really reasonable and the equipment is really good for the price. I mean, extremely good for the price. So uh, I will get on with it and you will see uh, the video that I have created. Thanks. Alright, I wanted to show you um, uh, something about aluminum screens. I, I had to have these re-stretched new material on it and what they do is they go, they don't care about the holes we have to use. So. Uh, they go right over it. So what you want to do is drill that out. Just take a 3 8 drill and drill that out because that glue is almost like plastic. So it's not that you're going to cut out with a knife or anything. So just drill that out and that happens. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is what I do because remember these carriage bolts have a little square edge and we want that. We want that because when we're turning the knob to tighten the bracket we don't want the bolt to turn. So. The easiest way I do it is I put the, the carriage bolt through there and I put a 3 8 inch 
nut on there. And I take a 9 16 wrench because it's easier than turning the knob. So let me see if you can see that. So you see how that knot, that uh, nut is sticking out. So if I take a a nut and pull it in, see how easy that was, and then back it off. See that that uh, bolt, that carriage bolt is really in there with those square holes, and that's what you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and do both sides. So I put a washer and I have other videos um, showing uh, how to drill the holes, you know. Um, So you see both these carriage bolts, that one needs a little more. Whoever drilled this hole was too much to the edge. It should have been in the center. But um, so that you want the carriage bolts to be flat as possible. You know, that one, like I said, it's kind of at an angle. So now you're going to put a washer. So you put your bracket, a washer, and then you put that on. That way you're not trying to do what I just did with uh with this. It's, it's too hard to to do to pull that in there. So I just wanted to show you that. So I'm getting ready to print uh, some t-shirts, and I just wanted to show you that with the aluminum screens. I really like aluminum screen to, to restretch them it was like ten dollars so once you buy it they're really a good buy they won't warp with the water so aluminum really works well with the blue diamond printer so i will take you from here to how to do a two color print on a t-shirt so i am going to do a two color print and what I'm doing is putting the first um, first color uh, actually this will be orange so this will be the first color but anyway it's two parts and it looks like wait a minute oh, okay goes like that sorry um, so it looks like that when it's complete. But the reason I want to set this up, I just put one of the colors. It doesn't matter which one. And you see how I have a black line there? So that's the center. I draw, I take a marker, mark the center. And I think this is four inches down. Then I line up the, what I can, right? In this case, it's you don't on that line so we we know we're on this board no matter what when you put a t-shirt on this board we know it's going to be straight so we don't want the image to be off in some other direction now the reason i'm doing this is What I like to do before I put emulsion on is 
take a screen so I know I kind of centered on both of my registrations so I know I have a lot of room to move and I center it kind of on the board but now I know where to put the image when I burn the image where to put it because you just can't put an image anywhere you want to make it easy on yourself so what I'm doing is I mark the targets. Okay, so all artwork should have a couple of targets, they call them. These targets all line it up. So when I put the emulsion on, I'm going to be able to see that. So I'm going to coat, and the other thing, I'm going to be able to coat the emulsion right here and not waste emulsion. Well, I'll probably go here. But basically, I'll be able to see that, so when I burn the image, I'm just going to, it doesn't have to be right on, but it's going to be in that general area where I burn this image. Now, you see, this is a one, 155 mesh screen. It's a finer mesh. I like to do that when there's some really detailed stuff. So, uh, uh, actually, actually the other one is the one that I'm using, the 155, because it has detail and it's going to be a color, it'll be burnt orange. And I, I really want that to be, you be, to be able to read that. Yes, I'm going to try a 110 mesh and it, uh, we'll see, you know, it, it might not, if it doesn't work, I'll have to go to a finer mesh. But I think it'll be all right. There, there is a lot of detail in that, so we'll, we'll see. But the other thing is I'm using a white ink. And that's just hell to push through it. The finer the mesh is, it's really hard to push white ink through um, uh, a finer mesh. So we're, we're going to give it a try. So that's screen number one and uh, okay, so that's that one. It's going to go there. I'm going to do the same. There's a 110 mesh. And this will be for this. But since the targets are in the same place, you know, and basically these two images are going to be on the same, close to near. But what's so good about the Blue Diamond is it lets you register um, your screen really easily. I mean, way, way easier than uh, uh, if you try to buy uh, a rotary press that, that doesn't have micro-registration and all that. It's really hard to, to fine tune and, and register. Okay, so the next one, so we know where, where on those two screens, those screens are going to go. So the next artwork This is for my catering business, my pizza catering business. And uh, if you're a small business owner like me and you can print your own t-shirts for, you know, just next to nothing, literally the t-shirts were $2 a piece. And when I'm done with the ink and all that, I'll just be like 25 cents more. So uh, you see it's uh, uh, basically uh, a two-color print and uh, someone did a caricature of me, which I think is real cool. So it's pizza, bake fresh at your next event. So that'll be two colors. It's a gray shirt. This will be a burn to orange, and this will be white. 
So, here again, we're going to do the same thing and look at that target really right at the end. So see how I put the target right on that line? So I know this is centered and um, on the board, right? So we're going to tape that image down and we are going to take our two screens and mark those targets one here and so when I burn this image I know where to put it and we know we're in an area we can uh, you know, have plenty of room for uh, ink here you know that's why I like to lay it out so that's that one and then we're going to do the same with this now on the sec on the back side I am using 100, 110 mesh on both of these. Uh, and, and we're going to see how it works on a, on a, on a, uh, a gray shirt with uh, white and orange ink. I, I, I think it'll look pretty cool. So, okay, so what I'm going to do is coat the screen and burn it and wash it out. And, and I have other videos that show that, how to do that. So I'm really not going to show that on this video. I just wanted to show you this. And then um, I'm going to show you, we're going to try out for the first time my mini conveyor dryer, um, which I created and everybody's been asking about. So you're going to see that. Let's see if that works all right. See that? That's the uh, two marks you're going to be able to see. I just wanted to show you that. Um, like I said, you can see the rest of these, how to burn the image and all that later and, uh, in other videos. All right, so um, I coated and washed out my screens. And you see I taped one of the um, images for the complete design down. It doesn't matter which one. I wanted to do this one. But you see, together, that'll be the image. Um, so now, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so, and I lined up the screens, but let me just loosen this up. Let me show you, maybe get back a little. I want you to get the whole 
picture. There we go. So you loosen your knobs up. This is really great about this registration. You see the screen moves easily and I'm able to line up um, the image pretty easy and what's really great about this system is when I tighten these knobs the screen doesn't move. When you have something you know the, the cheap rotary presses where you pull down the thing and you turn that knob the screen moves. This screen doesn't move and so now every time you put it in it's going to be in the same position. So I'm going to pull the camera up real close and kind of show you, hopefully you'll see how, how easy, see how this moves around easily and I can see through the screen to the image. Kind of line it all up. I hold it and then I tighten the knobs. See the screen does not move. So this registration is absolutely fantastic. Now I did it both screens and now we're going to start printing. Um, uh, and I'm going to determine, I'm thinking I'm going to put the white down. You Normally when you're doing a two color, but the ink is not touching um, or going over uh, like on the back. Uh, this is very separated so probably really doesn't matter whether I do the orange ink or the white ink but we'll, we'll give it a try and uh, also I'm going to show um, the conveyor dryer. Now this is the first time I'm using it. I, I'm hoping it, it works so we'll, we'll see that too. Um, so, uh, let's get ready and get printing.
bag off the table and let it just drop into a box. I think I'm going to do that. So it takes one minute, well less than one minute, you know, like 55 seconds to go from that end to this end. Um, I, um, I've been trying to put a zipper on this. This is a, this screen material with a, with a Teflon tape sewed on the edge. And every time I put a zipper on it, um, it ends up because it, this time it was nylon, it was a metal zipper. First time it was a nylon zipper. I don't know what I was thinking, but of course it melted. And then yesterday, the metal one had nylon holding the metal together, so that melted. So I just went and sewed the seam. Um, you'll see it come along here. The seam. I just had them sew it, but you see how distorted that is? Well, when the nylon um, zipper melted, it pulled the mesh material. This is aluminum, but it, it pulled it all out of wax. So, um, you know, next time I'm just going to sew them, and it wouldn't be, it won't look like that. The other thing is it's a little tight because the amount of room for the zipper. I have adjustments right here. Oh. I have adjustments that you can adjust it. So it's pulling from one side to another, but you know what? I just pull one smooth it over. It's not a big deal. It's not like it's going a hundred miles an hour or so. Um, but I'm going to allow a little more length so you can adjust so it won't way back and forth. Also when I was putting it on today I had to tuck it under and um, I didn't notice it was on one of the legs and it ripped a hole in the, in the belt but what's amazing is this <laughs> aluminum uh, screen material you buy from Home Depot is really inexpensive and you can actually just sew one of these up yourself. We're just using cotton thread. Um, but see I ripped the hole in it, it's still working fine. So really, they're really durable. And um, I'm going to run it all day today just to check it out, make sure it does it. But when I sell it, do you notice this? This is my 18 by 18 flash dryer. Let me see what you can see. Yeah, so my 1818 just slips right on here and you can take it off and use it for somewhere else or even now I don't know how it's kind of overweight and you might have to tie that down but you can literally swing it around and maybe use it for a flash while you're doing it I'm not sure but you can also adjust the height a lot of people say what you know what about the heat temperature well because it's out in the open, you can't control the heat in a flash dryer. They do have, uh, they do sell thermostats, but what it does is turn the flash dryer on off, off for 10 seconds, on for 10 seconds. And so literally, 
your flask dryer is turning off and on, and the lower the temperature, the longer it's staying off and on. And the way an infrared heat panel works, the minute you have it off, even for 10 seconds as that's going through, it's not drying the ink. So the way you control it is by raising and lowering. That is it. The, uh, the motor I have is one speed. You're not adjusting the speed. So what you can do is um, raise and lower this for, depending on what kind of shirt you're drying. But this is getting really hot. I've had it on for 10 minutes. So, you know, as I, literally this is the first time I've used it, but it's working fine, it's drying the ink. Uh, but I may have to ra raise it uh, here in a little bit. I also, the other thing, I'm outside and I have a breeze going through here. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now that that's gonna interfere with uh, your drying because it's literally blowing the heat away, but it's still working fine. So, you know, possibly in a enclosed area, this may have to, you know, I might have to rise it, raise it up uh, so you don't burn the shirt. But uh, so far, this is uh, really working great. And so the way I'm selling this is I'll sell the bottom part for one price, and my flash dryers are the, you know, you just go online and order a flash dryer. Um, but uh, the other thing is, uh, thousands and thousands of people watch that video on how to make a, a conveyor dryer. And that was just me. After many years, I used to build conveyor dryers. After many years, I, um, uh, um, I used to build conveyors and all that and sound, you know, back in 20 years ago and all that. But all right, here's a recap of the conveyor. Basically, we have a motor. We have adjustable um, cylinders so you can adjust the belt. There's an 18 by 18 flash dryer that just slips on. You can raise and lower it. On off switch. Um, you know, uh, basically it comes through, and this is my last t-shirt of the day, number 48, and it takes about a minute, less than a minute, for it to pass under the uh, heat panel and dry. You see all my shirts. Um, we have adjustable, um, uh, nuts there that can push this out or in so you can adjust the belt. I've been uh, playing around with this this belt um, and I have it down now. I, I uh, explained earlier I try to put a zipper on it but uh, the heat would melt uh, the nylon or whatever was on it. So basically it's all one uh, piece now and it it held up. I, I printed 48 shirts. There's no trouble with it. Um, the way you adjust the heat is by raising and lowering this. Um, there's two cords, one for the flash dryer, 110 volts, and one for the motor, 110 volts, and an on-off switch. Um, so what I'm doing is letting it cool down, but you know, actually this swings around, so you can probably just do that, turn the motor off, and let it cool down o out over here. Um, it's all metal. It has little feet, so you can adjust it. You know, this table is not straight, so you can adjust the feet. Um, basically, that's aluminum. This is all steel. Um, this is PVC pipe. Um, but... Basically, all my stuff is very simply made, so you can repair it if you need to replace the motor from Granger. Uh, I show you how to fix flash dryers if they go out. These are infrared heat panels, which are the best. Um, but basically, that's it. This aluminum really holds up, and uh, the only reason that is distorted, like I said, I had a a zipper on there and it, 
it was under there and it just melted so it, it pulled the mesh screen out of whack but uh, you know what if I when I send it to you this will already be on there and it'll be one piece and uh, that's not going to happen because the heat this is Teflon tape so that's not going to melt so uh, basically that's it I had to pull the the belt over every once in a while but really it's so slow that as you're printing um, uh, you'll be able to do that if you need to but the idea is um, I'm going to make this a little longer so you uh, you know once I remove the zipper it, it kind of tightened you know I, I couldn't do any of my adjustments so I'm assuming that with that play uh, that you will be able to adjust it and dial it in but um, but I just want to tell you what's going on it's my first time using it but absolutely worked worked fantastic so it's very basically simple uh, when I ship it, it literally it will all be together and you're just going to slip the flash dryer on um, I'm not sure how I'm going to crate it or box it it's not too heavy uh, I bet it's less than 50 pounds and so I'm not sure uh, I might just get a box that it will fit in but I have to work that shipping out so I don't know what shipping will be right off the bat until I get back from vacation. Um, you know, yeah, I, I don't think I'll have time this time around to uh, tell you in the video. But um, anyway, uh, that is basically it. Uh, it works really great. So that's it. All right, I don't know, I hope you can see what I'm doing, but basically when I line up a t-shirt, I make sure the same amount is on both sides, basically. And the rib of the neck is not on the board because that will lift the screen up. So when you're dealing with white ink or any high opacity ink, number one, you want it to be soft and creamy, all right? I had this white ink on the shelf for about six months and it kind of dries out. So what I do, what I did is I bought this. And a soft hand clear base. And so I put it in there and I took a drill with a paddle bit, bit you know, for uh, uh, drilling holes in wood and I broke off the tip so it was like a paddle. And I just whipped that in there. So this is very soft. And so the way I do it is I put, I flood it and I kind of push hard to get the initial base in there and I do it again and I don't push as hard so see how white that is on a dark shirt so now I'm going to flash dry it now you want your flash dryer as close as possible for flash drying flash drying you're just real, you're not curing the ink, you're drying the top so you can lay another screen on top and it won't get off on there. Now, after this flash dryer is on for a while, it literally takes seconds. This is a high opacity orange, burnt orange. Same thing, I'm pushing hard, and then, not so hard, to get it to be orange. In fact, I, I should have 
done a little more, but it, it's all right. Um, I'll do it on the next one. But basically, the first layer you get it into the the um, the shirt, and the second layer, uh, you know, pushes hard, and more ink will show up. So let's try that again. Again, you do not want to heat this board up. Um, or the glue won't stick and the board will warp. So try not to heat that board up because you just really want to just Um, you just want to dry the ink enough to lay another coat on there. So the longer the zone, it gets hotter and hotter. Same with what I'm doing with the mini conveyor. The longer it's on, the better, because you want to make sure your shirts are curing properly. So, at first, it might take about 30 seconds to do it, but after the zone, after 10 minutes or so, it's literally like five seconds. But again, I'm about two inches away from the shirt. Now when you're curing the shirt, you want it, the flash dryer to be a little higher. That's why I have over here, it's a little lower. So if you want to draw the shirt over here, you make that about five inches away um, and let it set a little longer, okay? Does that make sense? So, push hard. So then let's try to get a better there. If you push down, you're actually taking the ink out off the shirt. So that's why the second time I don't push it hard. Because we want a nice layer of orange. See, that's, that's really cool. That worked out great. So, now, here's the thing. I am actually not an expert screen printer. I do good enough to make shirts for me. I don't print for other people. Um, but listen, after a while, uh, you know, I've had a lot of people start out with the blue diamond. And once they get the hang of it, you know, there, there's people that bought equipment from me that built big companies that are really good at what they're doing. Uh, way better than me. So, uh, I can just tell you what I know from experience and, uh, and hope that gets you through printing t-shirts for you and your business. That's what I'm all about, is to help you save money on advertising for your small business. Now, I'm out here in the patio area, and there's actually a breeze blowing through. And that's not really good. Um, because it blows the heat away, so, but, but it, it seems to be working fine on both the conveyor and this. Uh, uh, so, and like I said, the longer it's on the, the, the infrared heat panel, uh, uh, just seems to be um, working just fine. All right, so that's that, two colors. So I really went all out, made a two color on the front and the back. I printed 48 t-shirts and a two color on both sides. And it's taken about, I'm gonna say an hour and a half to do each uh, 48 two color on each side. And you know what, the conveyor dryer really speeded everything up. I, I didn't realize how 
how handy it, it really is. Because while that's drying under there, I can print, I'll be printing another shirt. So. I messed up a few shirts, you know, um, along the way, right in the beginning. Try to try to practice on old shirts first. I uh, I haven't printed for about two years, no, about a year. So I uh, yeah, you got to get back in the swing of things. See how fast that. That's drying that. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera off. That's enough of that. All right, I uh, remembered a few other points <coughs> that I ran into today when I was printing. Um, that was pretty interesting. So. I will show you, well, I'll tell you about it, I don't want to show you. So, so we put our first coat down, and we flash dry. So what happened a few times, I forgot I was flash drying, and so the t-shirt stretches from the heat. It, you know, even though it's glued down, it starts pulling in, and so when I put the second coat, it was way off registration. And so, don't panic. Don't try to re-register it. Just realize it, uh, what happened. Okay, see, so I need to glue it down. See how it, it went off registration, but that's because, you know, I, I didn't have enough glue in it. This, this is a small shirt, so it reduced. So let's try it again, see what happens. All right, I'm gonna repeat what I just did. Listen, make sure you have adhesive about every other shirt, because I, what I was running into is the design was going off registration. And what was happening is the heat was, re you know, once I printed this, the first, I printed that and I put the flash dryer on. Remember what I said, this gets hotter and hotter. So listen, go to UV like seconds. If you get it too hot, the, the design shrinks. And if you don't have enough glue on there, it shrinks even faster. And so when you put the second color, what was happening is I'll, I'll, I'll show you a shirt that it happened to. So 
So see how that is right in the circle the way it should be? Well, let me show you a short that uh, what happened to it. See how that it went really weird? So the the shirt reduced or moved. So don't worry about your registration. What it is is the heat the shirt is heating up and uh, moving. So you don't want to flash dryer, it's getting hotter and hotter. Make sure it's just literally after a while it's just seconds like five seconds okay maybe at first it's longer but uh so make sure every other shirt uh spray adhesive and uh and don't flash dry too long all right that was all i wanted to tell you All right, another thing I wanted to point out is, okay, remember I said to soften up the white because it was real stiff. I used international coatings from Dynamic Screen Supply in Ontario. 1-800... Nine six seven four zero seven zero. Ask for Alex. Anyway, um, international zero seven two zero Q a quart. I think that stands. It's soft, clear base. This really softened it up, made it really easy to work with. I used about a quarter of it to do that, so I kind of filled up you know, from what I use. This is how much I, after I, you know, when you're all done, you scrape the excess, put it back in the container. And really, um, I probably used about a quarter of white and about an eighth a quart for the orange for 48 shirts. This is like 30 bucks each uh, for the ink. This is $22 for that. And, um, so I just wanted to point that out to you. International coating seems to be a good product. A lot of people ask, what do you buy? And so I'm really happy with these, these, this product. So there you go. Um, wanted to point that out. Thanks. So I just want to show you real quick how I clean a screen. I scrape all the excess ink off. At this point, I'm putting it in the other screen I'm gonna use, so the rest, I use Fast Open 97. I'm outside, it's really harsh smelling, but what's great about it is it really cleans plastic salt ink really really well and so um, basically you're just using paper towels and then it evaporates so you just throw the paper towels away because there's no real chemicals left um, when you're when you're all done, um, but like I said, you got to do it outside because it's pretty. The odor is really strong. So I put something underneath. So when I'm wiping that off, um, you know, it, it doesn't go down on the table or whatever you're 
cleaning it on. Now earlier today when I was printing, I ended up printing 48 t-shirts. I think it took about, about an hour. And uh, using the mini conveyor, actually that was really handy. But it went off registration and the ink was smeared. So what I did, is I didn't clean all the ink off, I just kind of pushed it to one side. Well, I took the squeegee and pushed it all off. And I put, you know, this is one of those practice pellons, but you can use uh, newspaper or whatever, paper towel. And I pushed the squeegee, got it off on that, got, it, got the image clean, turned it over, and you know, the, when it comes off registration or moves, it smears on this side. So you, that's what you use fast open for because it evaporates, it's not oily. And it won't show up on your t-shirt. So it, all I did is do this and I was back in business. So I'm going to clean up the middle again real quick. Now, you see, I use blue tape, you know, for painting. Um, you know, it's like um, paper tape, you know, you, you buy it at Home Depot. I use that for in here because what I like to do, see I'm all done. So now, you know, I'm not cleaning the ink out. of the corners. That makes sense. So I, I like putting tape, tape it real well because cleanup is a lot easier when you do that. And then I use a different tape on the other side. Um, all right, you see, so pretty cool, huh? So I'm going to do it one last, just get this edging. So now um, this screen is really ready to use again. Um, when I'm ready to print, and I'm leaving these brackets the same because guess what? I don't have to register it again. So uh, how about that? All right, so let's see how clean that is. And on the other side, I use a different tape. It's, uh, and I, I'm going to leave it because there's nothing wrong with it. It's like a plastic um, outside. I, I got it from, I think, Home Depot, but I'm not sure. Maybe a screen printing supply place, but it's like a plastic, not duct tape. It's like duct tape, but it's smooth, and um, I probably got it from a screen printing supply place. Uh, but anyway, so that's what you do, and I'm going to do it with the other screen, and 
paint going on the front paint or the front of the t-shirt that should take about an hour too. <laughs> 